Hello everyone. We are going to be talking about the most frequent number now. And it's a problem from Kochiap Long Challenge. It talks about this big array that we have of size n. And uh, queries from left index to right index for a particular value k. So what these queries signify is a range from left to right and a number k which is actually the frequency of the most occurring element. That's statistically that's a mode of uh, a given data set. So k is greater than r minus l plus 1 by 2. So that's the size of the subarray by 2 is less than or equal to k. Uh, the frequency of this element has to be greater than or equal to k. So that's more than 50%. You need to find such an element a of i in any given subarray. That's our main job. If you want a detailed description about the question, it's in the uh, description below. There's a link in the description below. Now, how are we going to solve this? The first thing you can do, the most brute force approach, is to take for every subarray all the, you know, do a linear scan and then find out if there is any element having frequency greater than this. Uh, that's going to be order n. And because the Q queries are to be order n Q, so uh, that approach sucks, and we're going to try something different. So let's assume that this is our original array: two, two, one, thirteen, thirteen, and two. Um, what we are going to define is a concept of runs. So a run is nothing but a contiguous set of elements uh, of the same type. So two starts over here. There's a run of two and two. There's a run of one. There's a run of 13 and 13, and there's a single run of 2. So this run is of size 2, this run is of size 1, this run is of size 2 again, this run is of size 1. That's how we are going to define what runs are. Starting from a particular index, contiguous elements up to a particular size. All you need to do is find out what is the left index of a particular run and the right index of a particular run for any given element. All right. And the way that we are going to do this is by pre-processing from the left side and from the right side. So let's find out what is the leftmost index for a particular element contiguously. We come to the first element 2. There's nothing to the left. So we store the leftmost index of that element, which is 0. Now we come to this 2. We are going to check if the element that was previous to this is equal to it. Is 2 equal to 2? Yes. Then we are going to be storing whatever uh, answer is on that element's leftmost. So that will be 0. Right, we come here to 1. We check if its previous element is equal to it. 1 is not equal to 2. Again, the same condition as uh, this element is given, which is the index 2 is stored. Similarly, for 13, 1 is not equal to 13, so we store 3. This element though, 13, has its previous element equal to it. So we store this value over there, which is 3. 2 though, this is an interesting case. The first 2 which occurs is at 0, but it's not contiguous. So we just look at its previous element, which is not equal to it, and we store not 3, but because it's not equal, that's why 5. So this is how we construct the left array. The right array is done in the opposite manner. We go to the right, is there anything after this element? No. So store that index, 5. Is there something after this element? Yes. Is it equal to it? No. So store its own index, 4. 13, right, yes, they're equal. So we store that very index, 4. Yeah. And uh, 2, element 1 has, again, 2 stored in it. Element 2 has one stored in it because they're not equal and this element has this uh, value stored in it one now any query of left and right can be answered in order one how well we are going to be taking right of i minus left of i and checking if that is greater than or equal to k what do I mean by i? If an element occurs more than half the number of times in an array and it is contiguous and the array is not cyclic, 
it means that if you go in the center element, that element has to be equal to the most occurring element. Otherwise, the condition will not hold. Otherwise, you can just output no on the spot. Right? If all the conditions have to hold, the center element has to be equal to the element having maximum frequency greater than 50%. So all you need to do is go to, for a given subarray having size uh, P, you just need to go to P by 2, the element at P by 2. And right of that minus left of that has to be greater than or equal to K. Only then will you output yes. Otherwise, all conditions fail and you just output no. Right. Let's take an example. Uh, let's take L equal to 1 and R equal to 3. So L equal to 1 and R equal to 3. Yeah. So this is your subarray. We'll go to the first element in the center, which is 1. Left of 1 is equal to 2. Right of 1 is also equal to 2. 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. Is that greater than or equal to and let's take a k also, k has to be greater than 50%, so uh, k is equal to 2, let's say. So is 0 greater than or equal to 2? No. So 1 is not an element that you're looking at. And so on and so forth. These queries will be answered very uh, fast in just order one time. Right, so if the queries are being answered in order one time, what is the time complexity of this thing? Pre-processing takes you order n time. And all the queries take you order one time, so that is the number of queries. So final complexity is equal to n plus q order. So this problem seems simple enough. I hope you solved it. If you didn't, then of course you are probably looking at this editorial right now. So uh, see you for the next problem. <laughs>